Hello Internet, welcome to another EMFT tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll study boundary conditions. We'll study three different cases of boundary conditions. Before we study the cases, uh, boundary conditions are the most important uh, application of Maxwell's equation. Whenever an electromagnetic wave uh, tries to intrude from one medium to the other, there is some characteristic changes in the wave at the interface of the boundary and that those characteristic changes are studied uh, or monitored using boundary conditions. In the first case, we will study boundary conditions between a conductor and pure dielectric and this is also popularly known as the boundary condition between conductor and free space so we've got free space here and a conductor here We'll need to study the behavior of E and D. E is electric field intensity and D is electric flux density. And furthermore, we'll need to study the tangential component of E and tangential component of D. And we need to find out normal component of D and normal component of E. And why is it important to find both the tangential and normal components. Uh, the reason is that any vector is composed up of its tangential and normal component using the parallelogram law rule. The resultant of a vector is made up of its tangential and normal vector. So if we are able to find the tangential and the normal vector, we can graphically plot the resultant vector. and we'll study the behavior of the tangential components on the boundary, we'll study the behavior of the normal components on the boundary. But to study those behaviors, it is very important to have knowledge of Maxwell's equation. So what we're going to do is, to find out the tangential component, we take up a scenario where we consider a rectangular loop where this width ET1 represents the tangential component of electric field intensity in air ET2 represents tangential component in conductor and we label these points 1, 2, 2 dash, 3, 4 and 4 dash now Maxwell's first equation says that E dot DL is equivalent to zero. When we open this thing up, we go from one to two e dot dl to dash e dot dl to dash to three e dot dl three to four e dot dl plus four to four dash e dot dl and all this should be equivalent to zero. Now furthermore, please understand the tangential component of ET in the air free space cannot exist because um, we know that charge cannot exist in free space so electric field intensity would also not exist in free space. So, uh, this component goes away because charge cannot propagate in free space 2 to 2 dash go away 
4 to 4 dash goes away I'm sorry 4 dash to 1 go, goes away and 4, 4 to 4 dash and 2 dash to 3 they go away because of the equal and opposite nature this is downwards this is upward so we are left with et to delta w if the width is delta w that becomes equivalent to 0 so et is equivalent to 0 so what we can say is that the tangential component of electric field intensity is zero at the boundary of conductor and free space okay so we know that D is equivalent to epsilon E so DT also becomes equivalent to zero as epsilon one cannot be zero now in order to find the normal component what we do is we take up a small cylinder and we assume the electric flux density to be coming out of that cylinder from all directions now in this particular case we take up the help of Maxwell's equation d dot ds is equivalent to charge enclosed so when we open this thing up it becomes d from top dot ds d from bottom dot ds to charge enclosed now please understand we have kept this height to be negligible and because of the symmetry because it is a circular thing and because of the symmetry uh, the entire D will be cancelled so this term goes away because of symmetry and small height so what we are left with is d n1 let this be delta s the smaller area on the top be delta s now if we were to take up the same direction of uh, the wave going from one medium to the other this becomes a negative thing changing the direction will and we have got Q enclosed upon delta S now charge upon area is surface charge density So this becomes the boundary condition for for the boundary of conductor and air and we'd say that the tangential uh, the normal component of electric flux density is not continuous. So, so you've 
got two results here. The first result is the tangential component which is which has come out to be zero and the normal component has come out to be this and uh, if we were to find out the normal component of electric field intensity we can do so by uh, substituting epsilon naught e n1 minus epsilon 1 e n2 is equal to rho s so uh, the ratio of uh, EN1 upon EN2 will not be equal to 1, so it will be not continuous or discontinuous. And the tangential component turns out to be 0. So these were the boundary conditions for uh, the conductor and pure dielectric. And I hope you liked this tutorial. And I'll come up with the second case in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye.